I did a number of Yiddish typesettings many, many years ago. That was when I was very little, and I was with my father, and we used to go to the different shops, and I would help him out. And while I was in high school, to earn some extra money as a part-time job, my father took me to different shops, and one of them hired me to do deliveries. Now in those days, I would get 50 cents a delivery. Didn't make a difference how long the delivery took. The delivery could have taken 10 minutes or two and a half hours. What would happen is there was a separation between the printing press and typesetting. And I was working for a typesetter who would do work for printers that didn't have the linotype machine or any method of setting type. They would receive the type from the linotype machine, put it on their press, which is like the machine you have outside, and produce the job for the customers. So to get the type that they needed, they would go to a specialist. All he did was set type, even though they were printers that had them both. And whatever it weighed, I mean, that package sometimes could have weighed 50 pounds. And I would have to schlep that package on the subway or on the bus to wherever this printer was and then come back, and that's how I got started. I did my little hitch in the Army, which was only a six-month deal. I, I did the six-month, six-year deal where I would go away every summer and once a week to active duty for the Army. And after I came back, my father took me to another friend of his where I wasn't getting paid. In fact, I always had the feeling that my father paid him to teach me how to become a linotype operator. And I think I worked for him for about six months learning things, what to do, what not to do. And after six months, I felt I had a basic knowledge of what was involved and I went out looking for a job that would pay. I found one on the Lower East Side, which was close to me. I was able to walk to work. I saw that the, in the 1960s, the industry started to change. The machinery and everything you have here is what was called hot type, and things were changing to what they called cold type. The computers weren't in yet, but there was a machinery that was using entirely different principles and different methods to produce the same thing, much faster, much cleaner, and I would say cheaper. So at that time, I was a young man, and I was married, and I was saying, how am I going to support my family when all these things changed? So I went to a shop that had the new methods coming in. So I was able to get my foot in the door <clears throat> and learn some of these machines. By the 1970s, they pretty much took over everything. But I learned them, I understood them. I had four children, and sending four t children to yeshivas was an expensive proposition. So I gambled, and I went out on my own. At that time, you were able to get four weeks vacation in the union shop as a linotype operator. So I took my four weeks, I opened up my own shop, and that was it. I, I never went back, and I went into business, and I stayed in business for like 30-odd years. I really stopped with the Yiddish when the kids started in yeshivas, uh, because when my children went, they were learning Hebrew and not Yiddish. So uh, even though the letters are the same, everything about it changes. You can't intermingle the two. I couldn't do Hebrew typesetting because that's what became the vogue at that time. So Yiddish pretty much went by the wayside for the Hebrew. And today, I still have a friend or two of mine. They do Yiddish. They live in Borough Park, Brooklyn, which is a very orthodox area. 
and he does some Yiddish typesetting. Plus, he also does some Hebrew typesetting. But the Yiddish outside of the small areas, like Borough Park or Williamsburg or Munsee, New York, it's just not there anymore. 